Okay, so now that you've spent some time actually researching your list of key phrases and you have a good list put together, right? A good list of maximal return key phrases, right? You can now think about what would those, um, how do I work those uh, key phrases into my content? And you can't just take those phrases and just plug them in anywhere, right? You need to develop content that will inform your visitors, engage with them, persuade them to convert, right? And each page can actually be optimized for up to five key phrases, but in usual, it's better to focus on fewer number of key phrases, right? And so try to figure out those key phrases and then figure out how you could write stories around them, intellectual thought pieces, uh, case studies about your firm, etc., around those key phrases. Now, one small cautionary note, multimedia content is difficult for search engines to decipher historically, uh, though machine learning is changing that. Essentially, almost all the, the, the search engines are investing in technologies to try and make it so that um, it is easier uh, for them to see what's inside the content of a multimedia file, right? Uh, but while that's happening, and even after it's happening, it doesn't matter too much, you should always be cognizant of how you're labeling the content you're putting up on your website. You should use descriptive file names so that the search engines can kind of figure out from the file names what's going on. Uh, you should use what are called alt tags and title attributes and meta information uh, that provide you with additional insight. And you should use descriptive captions, right? And relevant header tags, right, along the way. Um, so this might seem like you don't know what alt tags are and title attributes and all this off the top of your head. I'm going to pause and I'm going to show you an example of these in um, a real website. Okay, so here I am on the NC State University website and you can see uh, they have a bunch of different images, right? And it might be hard, um, you know, obviously it's going to work well if someone types in something like NC State or Think and Do, they'll be able to find out this page pretty easily. But what about if they type in red bell tower, right? Are they gonna be able to find this? Well, when I cursor over that, you'll notice it highlights the words, the bell tower in red. And that's because of the fact that actually in the code, there's something called an alt tag, an alternative tag, which will display if, um, as a tooltip in this case, but it would also display if there if someone for some reason had image loading turned off, which you don't do anymore, but used to be a thing that people did uh, to increase the speed of their web communications, right? So how does that actually translate? Well, over here, I have the actual code. Let me make this shrink better a little bit, fit better for you guys a little bit. So here we have the actual code that displays that picture, right? And you'll notice it says that the title of the picture is the bell tower in red, and it also says all the bell tower in red. So search engines can use content like this in order to really understand what these pictures are around, right? Or not what they're about. So the alt tags and things, and then you know you could put captions under them. In this particular case, there are no captions under this, right? Uh, but if you look up here, you know you have things like new heights and it talks about basketball, and there's a caption under it, right? And so that also helps the search engines figure out what the picture is about, right? Uh, and then, and yeah, and so those all provide tools for you to gain some insight and for the search engine to gain some insight into what these uh, videos and graphics are about. Okay, let's go back to the, the search engine optimization discussion. Okay, so besides um, all the on-site optimization you can do, probably the one of the most important things you can do to increase your search engine results is increase the popularity of your links, right? So links to your site validate its importance. As we described, the link is essentially a vote, and more votes equal equates to more trust, more importance, and a better ranking in the search engine results pages. Before we get there, let's just briefly describe what an HTML link is, right? So many of you know it from clicking on one, but what does that actually break down into? Well, there's actually a really simple kind of way that you put HTML links into web pages is that you start with this little less than sign and then A, where the A is, is, means anchor, and then href, which is hypertext reference, which is what links are, they're hypertext references. And then you can say http colon slash slash www.ncsu.edu. You could say, and then you put in what you want the words to display are, right? Which in this case is NC State, and then a slash A indicating you're done, right? So that AREF and slash A are HTML tags. They specifically anchor the tags uh, since they anchor the link uh, that shows where the link starts and ends, right? Um, www.ncsu.edu is considered the target page. It's where when you click on the link, you will wind up. 
Um, but you know, even though in this case I did link to the homepage, you shouldn't link to the homepage all the time. Uh, it actually helps your rankings overall if some of your other pages also have a lot of inbound traffic, right? Um, and so it's important to spread out those links around other places. NC State is called the anchor text. It is the visible text of the link anchoring down that one side of the link to that particular document. Of course, not all links to your website are created equal, right? Some links are more highly weighted by the search engine results, the search engines than others, right? Links from news sites like CNN, the United Times, Fox News, they are more highly weighted than links from things, uh, than from other commercial sites, right? Links from government sites and university sites, .gov and .edu, they transfer more trust to the website, indicating that they, they find this website to be trustworthy. Um, it's also important to know that the more relevant the site is to the anchor text, the more value is transferred, right? So if the site, for instance, is all about the ACC and the link in is NC State, that's going to be partially relevant because NC State is part of the ACC, uh, but it might be more relevant if it was a, um, a if the website was pointing to was something about North Carolina athletics or something like that, right? Um, Links from higher rank sites in general also transfer more weight. So you really want to need to work on maximize not just the number of links, but also the weight of those links in your network. So how do you encourage people to link to your website, right? If you don't, if they're not linking to it already. Well, one is you create content focused on your niche audience. Uh, create content that really appeals to them, make it emotional, make it potentially useful, uh, make it entertaining, right? Uh, examples of popular content include things like listicles, which are these uh, articles slash lists where it's like top 10 uh, reasons to do X, right, or whatever. Uh, infographics become very popular. Uh, websites are actually tools, like they help you solve problems. Those are always useful. Websites that have games, and then websites that have how-to content also helps out quite a bit. So besides all these other methods of optimizing your search engine results page, one of the last things you should definitely do and, not, and, and you should be doing on a regular basis is to look into what your users are saying about your website, right? Um, user insights provide an effective and way of judging the relevance of value of a site to a key phrase. If those users are bouncing, i.e. they come to your website and then leave immediately, this tells us a lot about how relevant that site is to the words that the users were used to finding it, right? If the bounce rate is lower, then that seems like that's a more important set of words for that particular website. Um, you should explore the way that your users got to the website and then try to back out what they were looking for, right? Um, Social media also has a huge influence on SERPs, right? Social media signals relevance to the page to a particular topic. And in fact, nowadays, a lot of what the search engine results are personalized. So if your friends or family are sharing particular content, um, then that will actually boost that content in your own search engine result pages, right? Um, so that's one way that, you know, social influence has a direct result on SEO. Mobile is, of course, king. More and more search happens on mobile devices. People type less on mobile devices, so that needs to be taken into account. However, searching by things like voice, imagery, and barcodes are, much, are done much more often nowadays, uh, which means that you have to adapt to those new methods of, of communicating with the search engine. Your site should be useful and accessible for mobile devices, and uh, embedding location in your content, by the way, is also important since a lot of search, mobile search engines tailored to the location of the user. So to give me an example, I just typed in the word pizza in Raleigh, and uh, it immediately gave, or sorry, I just typed in the word pizza. I happen to be at NC State in Raleigh, right? But it gives me nothing but pizza restaurants in a nearby area to me. So that kind of gives me this, some indication of how um, really having all that location information helps you rise on the search engine results pages. What not to do. So this is a lot of the black uh, hat SEO methods that we discourage you from doing. So you shouldn't use hidden text, the text like making the text the same color as the background. That's something that a robot will pick up on. It'll read that text, but a human won't see, right? Um, hidden links do the same thing, making the links the same color as the background. 
cloaking is showing one page of search crawlers and another to users, right? So you might show one to the search crawlers that has no ads on it because you want to increase the, the trustworthiness of your white site, but then show another one to users with a lot more um, ads on it, right? You could just send automated queries to Google and then click on your own links, right, to try and spike those rankings overall, uh, but that's not going to help too much. Um, you shouldn't load pages with relevant keywords, and you shouldn't create content farms with duplicate content and link to your account. That's something that a lot of firms were getting away with for a while, uh, but uh, uh, Google and the rest have cracked down on that. Finally, you need to make sure that your website is optimized for the actual users, right? Not just the search, search engines. Generally, we're optimizing for the search engines, but you need to think about how the users are going to respond to that changes. There are small differences, and when a search engine changes its algorithm, that may affect your results. You should constantly monitor your uh, placement in the search engine results and develop a plan to cope with what happens when you drop further down. Um, one way to think about it is that if you drop to that second page on most search engine results, there is a vanishingly small number of people who are actually going to find that particular link. So it's important to keep on top of this. Okay, well that's it for search engine optimization, and we'll talk about search engine advertising soon.